Hello, RE out there. It's Mark with Read You Over, and we are back to it with our Gal Civ 4 in depth tutorial episode, probably 10. And we're getting through it. We're getting through it, folks. Uh, again, this is just kind of a discover the game, talk about everything we're doing at all times and all the decisions. So, as I remember, we left off, we're trying to get these dank constructor ships located where we want them now i have this guy up here is trying to cut across because i see there is a control relic as well as an a lyrium over here in any strategic resource we want to try and get two or three of them or more possible with one star base so that's what we're shooting for the taurians are kind of expanding quickly so we're in a little bit of a contest but uh yeah ultimately we have an event popped up this is from a TAS Victory 1 survey report, lost cargo container. Your flagship comes across a, across a drifting cargo container, seemingly abandoned and drift in space for years. The container is filled with valuable trade goods and rare resources. Excellent. Acquire the valuable goods? Yes, please. A plus 5% gross income to all worlds for 50 months. So apparently we're going to distribute all those wonderful goods across all of our colonies for the next four years. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, we're actually pretty strapped for cash. If you notice, we're sitting at a plus three income per month right now. Let's talk about income real quick. You have a little bit of a tax rate. Um, we're going to jump down here into the civilization tab. And you just have a straight up tax rate. You adjust it. The higher it goes, the less approval, the more disapproving your population is. But you can see here the expenses are really where the breakdown comes in. You have a touch of ship maintenance. You can see it's relatively moderate, though, uh, depending on the size of the ship, whether it's a flagship. But you can have a pretty large fleet before that gets crazy expensive. So for right now, we have six ships out there doing the work for our civilization. It's only costing us three maintenance. The really big chunks that are coming from colony maintenance, as you see, it's got a breakdown by planet. This is going to just come down to building improvements in general. And finally, starbase maintenance. Early on in the game, your star bases are not that developed. You haven't put that many modules on. But as the game progresses, progresses, you can put 20 modules on one star base. Just improvement, defensive, offensive, mining, uh, cultural sensors. It just really adds up. In an individual star base can can cost you a huge amount. So you can get your your maintenance expenses can grow into the hundreds of credits easily. So. One thing you really need credits for, though, a couple things, is obviously down here in your Galactic Bazaar. You can just straight up buy these strategic resources, and you can sell strategic resources. So that's a good way to bring income in and to use it up. But one thing that's easy to forget, especially in the early game, because it doesn't really stand out, it's almost like a hidden feature, is that every colony you have whether it is a colony or a core world, when you click on it, has orbital improvements. And in general, you could do this roughly the same uh, orbital improvements around any, any colony of yours. It doesn't really change much. Every now and again, they'll have a special resource that's just on that world, and it'll usually appear right up here at the top of the list, so it's easy to see that the, and maybe it's harvesting snugglers from space. You're like, yeah, okay. There's snugglers that are in orbit in a ring around the, the planet. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, all the remainder of these are more or less boilerplate. You get them in any colony. So if I click, I'm on Earth. Earth can build three orbitals. If I jump over to Mars, Mars can build one orbital. But if I jump into the orbital improvements, it is just the exact same list for the most part. Here is why this ties into credits pretty heavily, is that almost every improvement sensor ray 100 250 credits atmospheric cleanser 100 credits orbital prison 250 credits this is a credit sink now for the most part there aren't maintenance costs i think there might be a couple of these that just one or two that have a maintenance cost but in general they don't so this is a great place to put surplus credits as you get them and obviously you can imagine easily having a dozen or 20 plus colonies each of them with one, two, or three slots to build orbital improvements. Think they're satellites. Functionally, it's a satellite. Um, you can dump many thousands of your credits in there. But it is something that you develop over time. 
you're not going to have the thousands of credits right at the start. Uh, say it's going to take 10,000 credits to build out all your orbitals. So it is something you'll do over the course of the game, but it's very easy to play for, say, an hour at a time and never think of checking your orbitals. But oftentimes there are a couple of civilization one-off improvements that you only get to build once anywhere in your, in your civilization uh, sphere of influence. So only one of your colonies can get it. So you'll want to make sure those get built up probably first because they're usually quite potent. And then other ones are more situational. I could see if I had a colony world, say over here, Kratos 2, that's near to the your singularity's space of influence. I might want to put an orbital improvement up here, such as the planetary beacon, which would provide influence growth of 20%. That would help me resist the influence growth of the icon, uh, sorry, of the Yor uh, over here. But I wouldn't necessarily put a planet that's deep within my control sphere, like say Mars. Mars isn't really near to any enemy territory, so I wouldn't put that that uh, influence improvement orbital around Mars. So you kind of have to weigh it out a little bit. Um, some of them are more useful than others. I probably will do a little faux tier ranking of the different orbitals at some point just to, to run through them. I know one of them is like a planetary defense module, which adds a plus 20 to your planetary defense. But most planets just sit around 150, Earth is sitting at 248. So the idea of adding 20 to 160 or 300 is just a little it's like a five to ten percent improvement pretty nominal and it's only ever going to be useful on a planet that's under threat of being attacked so i only point out that some of the orbital improvements are not really worth considering now i interesting thing um side note before i forget you'll notice that the your singularity which is an ai synthetic civilization their homeworld is Iconia. Now, anyone who's played the game knows that there is an entire civilization known as the Iconians. Well, <laughs> that's because the Iconians invented the Yor as their servants. Um, and then the Yor singularity became a singularity. Super intelligence, I guess. They're not really more intelligent than anyone else in the galaxy. But yeah, they massacred the Iconians and drove them as refugees into space. That's what happened. That's why the Yor start on the world of Iconia, and the Iconians don't start on Iconia. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of lore dump there. So um, I want to jump into Earth though, real quick. Not that we have money, but let's look at these orbitals. Would there be one of these that is really worth us getting soon? Well, a couple quick things here. Um, Base Elevator is an interesting option. It's nice because it is actually pretty damn cheap. It's only minus 50 credits, takes two Durantium, gives you a plus one mineral input, which can be very handy. So if you have a world, a colony that has very poor mineral inputs, such as Alula Borealis 1 here, they've been struggling the whole time because they have just such cruddy inputs. This might be a good world to initially build a space elevator around. Now, granted, this one does have a maintenance. This is one of the few orbitals that does have a maintenance. Another nice option around any of your planets early on in the game is the orbital market. Why? Because it costs zero credits to build. It takes a single Durantium. There's no maintenance or upkeep, and it provides a straight plus one wealth. So this is one where if you've been harvesting Durantium, you've got eight 10, 12 Durantium in your piggy bank up here you've harvested, go around to your 6, 10 colonies and put that orbital market on all of them and it'll help you boost up that struggling income to start with. So I could see doing that right now. I can go to my orbital market here and just say, yeah, let's do it, build. This is especially effective I've noticed on a planet, say Mars, where you're like, well, it's not a real colony or it's not a... a it's not a core world, and it's kind of, it's not at the border. I don't really need it for anything. That's a great place to dump a market. Just like, well, it'll definitely help. I'll take it. So, and it's cheap. It's dirt cheap. It costs one Durantium, which is it's about the cheapest orbital you can make. So, yeah, bear that in mind. But back to Earth, was there one that I wanted to definitely build? Yeah. 
the logistics array is one, it's a civilization achievement. I can only build it once. The reason I want it is it gives plus one control per month. And you can see up here, we're sitting at just a plus three per month. So that would be a big 33% bonus to our total control on a monthly basis. What will it take to get that logistics array? Well, 100 credits, one Durantium, one Thulium, one Prometheum. So I should get that built immediately. Can I sell off maybe a bit of Prometheum right now to get the credits and buy it? Because the nice thing about orbitals is you get them snap instantly. There's no build time. So let's do it. Let's jump into the bazaar. Let's go to our Promethean. Let's just sell two of them real quick. You can see it popped up my credits. I'll jump back to Earth. And I'm going to build it at Earth because Earth will be well defended. This is kind of a key orbital. And because I have several other slots for additional massaging of what Earth needs. But yeah, let's jump down to the logistics, logistics array and build it. Boom. You can see right there, our control went to four. So yeah, as soon as you've got that Thulium, that Prometheum, that Durantium, you want to get that built pretty early on in the game, if possible. So that was a good option. But yeah, that's a little talk about orbitals. Now you guys see that going. Um, I don't think there's much else to do. We're going to keep advancing, and we're going to really try and get our constructors harvesting as many of these strategic resources as possible. So I have an idle ship here. This is the Victory, which is one of our small flagships. Um, yeah, let's just find another nugget of... Oh, geez. We have explored, it looks like, most of the capsules and artifacts in our neck of the woods. Let's push them out a little bit. Let's push them out this way. We'll just see if we can find a random one, and then we might send them over to the star here in a little bit. So we'll just have them kind of explore. We'll manually control them for the time being. So we have another idle ship, and that is a freighter trade ship. Excellent. So this is coming off of Kratos 4. Does Kratos have any trade routes? No. So I just clicked on Kratos once, and I would see an arcing, pulsing line off to another world if I had a trade route. But I don't. And also, if I come down here to the Trade Routes tab, I can see that Toria has sent trade to us, Earth and Kratos 4, two incoming trade routes. It's generating three credits on each of those, but we know we're strapped for cash. So yeah, let's take this trade ship and send it off to the biggest damn planet they have, Toria. In, um, boom, there she goes. So she'll be there in three or four turns. No, trade routes are going to gener generate more money the more credits that the destination planet produces. So in this case, Toria is sitting at 20.6 income. Whereas if I were to mouse over Pearl, it is sitting at a 4, a, a input to 4, but I'm going to assume that's roughly where it's sitting. The Deep is a 3, Char 1 is a 4, and Tolomon 4 is a 1. So that would probably be the least valuable place to make a trade route with. So yeah, just to bear that in mind. But with any luck, we can start pushing this number up because we really are broke as a joke, right? I have an idle shipyard. And this is around Kratos 4, where the trade route just finished up. Okay, geez, what do we need here? Um, I say we want some production, some modules for star bases. You can see up here, we don't have any listed. So... Let's get a module built. It'll take a little bit of time, but let's jump to our shipyards and star bases tab. I see we have a constructor in the queue and two different star bases working on production modules. So yeah, we'll get a little piggy bank of those saved up for our more valuable star bases. And then we'll probably want to build the, a, a warship or two. We have to try and keep a little bit of parity with the other Xeno species because the Yor although they're at the bottom of the, of the we'll say, um, faction power ranking, is literally what it's called, their military might may be above ours. We're sitting at third out of five spots. So although we're doing really good on production, on influence, on income and approval, our research is shite and our military, we're sitting in the middle of the pack. We don't want that Yor coming in on us. We got to be careful. So we'll get some warships going. And then we do have an event. Here we go. Kratos 4 Planet Report. A new pathogen is born. I, th I thought we dealt with this last time. We have... <laughs>
The population on Kratos 4 is plagued. If you guys remember, we did the option of our civil citizens will survive, but our enemies may be incapacitated by it. Let's hope it spreads. We did that. They became plagued. And what plague means is that they are contagious and their growth rate suffers a minus 0.3. Most, most organic or carbon, sorry, most carbon based life forms have a growth of one per pop. So you have one pop, it gives you one growth input. Pretty linear. Uh, now, like a Mimot will have a three to their growth, three times. They they grow really fast per Mimot. But um, yeah, so right now our, our our plague people are sitting at a zero point seven. So it's like a thirty percent reduction to the growth rate. Can we fix this? We could. We can quarantine everyone until a cure is found. Now this is only on Kratos four. So for 10 months, roughly a year, minus 100% manufacturing, minus 100% gross income, I think we're going to need to do it. I think we need to get this fixed. Let's find the cure. Let's bite the bullet. Let's hope the plague doesn't spread to other planets. <laughs> All right. I just wanted to see what it would do, but it's, it's not that interesting so far. Now, listen, we could be wrong. It could be that like years later, some really interesting thing will happen because of some choice you make in an event earlier on. I actually hope Stardock programs in little gems, little cookies, Easter eggs like that, where it's like, oh, you did this thing. And only way, way down the road does it trigger something else to happen. I, I like that idea because it means you could get some varied game mechanics that most of the time people would choose to not let their people be plagued. But every now and again, they'll make some crazy decision you would think wouldn't be common sense. And so in those rare cases, you would get a special little treat or event that happens in your game. And because they're spread out by time, it's not immediately obvious what caused that unusual event to happen. I know uh, Stellaris, which is another great space game, has a lot of very rare, obscure chains of events that can happen. And many players will never see them in all their gameplay, which is, I think, kind of cool occasionally. Not too much of that, but a little bit, yeah. Um, speaking of Stardock, though, Back to Stardock. I know they have the um, Warlords something expansion came out just in April, I think. I will try and pick that up. And that, I guess, really improves like ship to ship space combat. Um, at this point on this game, it's based off of the original or off of Supernova. So when we're done with this playthrough, I will pick up the expansions, whatever's out there. I'll grab them up. And we'll add those into our gameplay as we go forward on Galsa 4. I'm really liking Galsa 4. Um, I hope, though, that they don't make rebalance and mechanics changes that are too drastic. Because that's my one complaint about Stellaris, a game I've been involved with for since the beginning, of, roughly. And I've put hundreds of dollars into expansions, so they've gotten my money. But one of my frustrations is that every time I go back to Stellaris, like say I take off six months a year from it and go back to it, the game's drastically different. Balances are different. Uh, and you feel like you're relearning it every time. So I, I would really encourage you, you know, developers like Starduck, I understand they want to make expansion, more content, grow their game. But any change to the base game should never be more than a 5 or 10% adjustment to that needle from where it was so even if over time your game is slowly drifting that curve away is going to happen over multiple years because it's really frustrating when you feel like what you knew and the tactics and strats you used to put in don't work anymore yeah it's not fun <laughs> I, I think if stellaris is the only game you play and you're touching it every month for the last five years cool but most players that's not what's going to happen yeah, long story short. Research completed terraforming. We've reached the point where we no longer need to adapt our agricultural needs to meet the local environment and can now modify the environment to meet us at least halfway. So we got Planetary Recycling Center, which is a building, terraforming module, which allows us to change a hex of water to a, a usable land hex. And finally, we can upgrade our agriculture. Not that we have a whole lot of agricultural development. So that's great. Let's choose a new tech here. So for our research bonus techs, we've got these three lined up. Yeah, we're going to choose one of these ones for the time being. Oh my gosh, I see plasma beams down here at 29 turns. You know, the one time you would grab that would be if you had a 
a precursor anomaly you could research or a leader that when you hire the leader or completed the uh, anomaly, it completed the current research. You, if you ever had one of those available, you would select plasma beams at 29 turns, go in, hire the leader, get all that massive research all at once, in this case, 682, and then switch, switch to a different research. We may do that at some point, but for the time being, we have um, interstellar cartography. I like that. I like the moves plus two modules, which we're out of, as well as perimeter scanners. What does perimeter scanners get us? Just more sensor range. So this would be a, a, a star-based improvement. It would take a module to put this on, but plus eight to sensor range is not inconsiderable. What else do we have? Avenger missile system. This is just better weapons on our ships and planetary adaptation. Strip mining another housing upgrade, and a couple of new policies, genetic mutation and protect the planet. They're all decent. They're all decent. Let's jump into that interstellar cartography for the time being at three. We'll hit done. And I'm going to jump into our leaders tab because I just want to check really quickly. I don't see any of those special science things. I The science one that, that gives you the um, next technology immediately usually looks like a book icon so keep an eye out for it and that's one reason why you every several months you want to come in and take a look at your leaders these people will phase out so sarah Mai here eventually in four months will be gone so you want to be checking in there even if you don't think you need leaders keep up on this and of course you never know when you're going to find someone who's got like a really great intelligence or, or diligence or something like that um how are our ministers doing see th these social Ministers, we could definitely find better social ministers. Seven is not great. We could hit nine, 10, 12, potentially. Science is sitting at, okay. And uh, of course the 15 here, Art E, is amazing with that diligence of 15. We'll probably never find a better diligence. So he'll he'll be doing that job for, for a long time. Okay, let's hit done. And just check in at our vault. We have plus 10 hit, per, hit points on an entire fleet. We don't have an active fleet right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. And we could invite new leaders. We'll hold off on that for a little bit. The reason is, uh, it, it that's a great one to use to pull in several new leaders. I think you get like three new leaders. But you got to have credits to take advantage of that. So we'll pop that off pretty soon. But we, we got to get our credit situation. You can see here, we are broke as a joke, folks. We're hitting tab. Okay, I actually see this constructor is in position. Let's see here. We have a this antimatter is going to our star base there. That's fine. This guy is getting thulium. Oh, right there. That's coming to us. Perfect. And yeah, let's grab this lyrium. So we will. Actually, I'm going to move this guy a little closer. I want it to encroach upon their space as much as possible. And one more. There you go. So this will still pull in the Illyrium, but it'll start to press up against their star there. So I'm going to make a mining base. Boom. Done. And you can see there, one-tenth of an Illyrium per month. We'll call that good for now. I have no modules to make improvements with, so that is what it is. But in general, we are capturing, it looks like, two Illyrium star bases one single Durantium star base, although we do have this Durantium, we will start harvesting. We've let that sit up to this point because it's within our space, but we do need to jump on top of it because a Torian constructor could come in and snatch that resource away from us. You can, I think, put a star base in contested space. Is that true? I know you can certainly harvest a resource that's in contested space. And then your star base will start to project out uh, control from there. So you gotta be cautious. Okay, uh, what else? AMAT. We've got two star bases producing AMAT. We have two star bases producing Promethean as well as Kratos 4. And we have one star base producing Thulium. So that's not bad. Anything else? Uh, Earth is producing some uh, Aurorus Arboretums. And our Lula Borealis is producing Harmony Crystals, which is actually really nice. Um, it, you can never have too many Harmony Crystals in the game. And I see our Constructor up here is shooting across to this location. We're going to advance the turn. Here we go. With Minimal Ceremony, the first of our Trading Fergus pushes away from the slip. 
When it returns, it will contain a small portion of the galaxy's wealth, the first in what will surely be a long series of profitable exchanges for our people. So that is with Toria there. I'm very excited. If we jump down here to trade routes, I can see that our total trade between Toria and Earth is sitting at 7 right now. Us to Toria is generating 3.6. Toria to us is generating 3.3. We're making more on us to Toria because we control that route. So if we compare the two, Toria to us, relations are cordial. That's good. So we got the trade route value is going to be comprised of the root length of 1, root age of 1.6, and trade planets incomes. Incomes. So both planets, plural. No, trade planet incomes. Yeah. I think plural. So if we look here, we see the trade planet incomes is, point, is 0 0.7 in both cases because it's the same two planets. So that's the same. The root age, though, is newer with our trade route to them. So it's giving us less value and the root length is the same. So it's a straight up comparison one way or the other. Also, it looks like we get a 33% bonus to it because we're the initiator. So you get one third extra if you if it's your trade route to them than the other way around. But yeah, there you go. And then presumably uh, the cordial relations maybe affect that rate. I don't know. Maybe it's just saying that, yeah, you guys get along. And just so you know, because maybe at war, the trade route doesn't work. I'm sure, we'll find out. But uh, yeah, listen, I'm happy about that. We need the damn income to start coming in, though. Damn, dude, we are just, why is, why is our income just dropping? We were at like a plus two, the plus three, then a zero, now a minus one. What's causing that to happen? Is it buildings we're completing? It's concerning. I guess we added an extra star base. Yeah, a base star base takes away one maintenance yeah okay that's got to be it we'll keep an eye on these numbers because i just feel like we're just going more and more broke every second <laughs> ship idle okay an ascension crystal interesting now uh i believe that just does what it gives you ascension score which is uh i I don't know. I don't know exactly what Ascension is for. I, I Quite honestly, I haven't gotten that far into the game where I've ever ascended. Is it part of a prestige victory? I I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's there. Um, from here, let's... Oh, shit. That's the Taurus fleet. Okay. From here, though, we're going to head to the star system. Oh, oh, there we go. Wait, I want that. I do want us to check that star system, but I'm actually looking for a capsule to research. Um, we got some new resources at the Galactic Bazaar. Snuggler colonies, Monsadium, and Arnor spices. Okay. Shipyard's idle. What do we got going on at the shipyard? This is a Lula Borealis shipyard. Gosh, do we need more asteroid miners? I know we'll need a constructor soon. Let's hit done before we jump in there. I'm just checking our asteroid belts. I see we have one asteroid patch that could be developed here. There. So those aren't great asteroid patches, but they could be developed. If I jump to my starbase, I have a construction that will be done in shortly at the forge. That one is going to be for that Durantium right there. We already know that. So what do we need from Alula Borealis? I could see another constructor to grab either this Illyrium or that Illyrium. So I think that would be a smart choice. So let's do that. Let's have them make a constructor. Granted, 17 turns is a really long build. God, I'll tell you what Alula needs is, is that input to wealth. Not wealth, sorry, minerals. I could get rid of the orbital market. It'd be a waste of Durantium. <laughs> Probably a small mistake on my part. I should have actually burned a Durantium to get them the... Uh, which one was it? Oh, no. Don't do that. Uh, we should have given them the Space Elevator. Well, no, because the maintenance would have been one. That's why we didn't do it. Although it's cheap, it costs two Durantium. The maintenance kind of was something we couldn't afford. That's why we didn't build the Space Elevator, if I'm not mistaken. 
So for the time being, that's fine. We'll advance the turn. I see we have another executive order available. Now, here we go. This is top culture and lockers. We are sitting at the top of that list for getting our culture points. But what else do we have available here? We can pressure scientists for 30 control cost. Yeah. Oh, shit. Are we working on plasma beams? Son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Um, I didn't I didn't mean to do that. I thought we were on interstellar cartography. There we go. And then we'll pressure scientists. Yes, please. And we have a shipyard idle. This is Earth. They just finished the constructor. Are there any planets to colonize? Hold on. Let's jump to planets. Artemis. Yeah. Uh, Artemis is right here. We might as well grab it for that little bit of research. So, and I think Earth's population is sufficiently large. Yeah. 9 to 10. They're nearly maxed anyway. Let's pluck away one of those colonists. So we will jump here. We will build the colony ship. Have it done in two turns. And that'll be the last available planet to colonize at this point. Let's advance our turn again. Oh, oh, here we are. Constructor made it. Yay. Constructor. I'm going to actually have it build right here because it'll help push into this sphere of influence against the Xenos. I could push her forward because potentially there's another resource out here, but most likely the only thing you really find in, so listen, you find antimatter in the accretion disk of black holes. That's where you're going to find that. You're going to find Illyrium in nebula, in clouds. And control relics, you can just find free-floating in space. They're kind of the only ones that are really just in the middle of nowhere. Durantium, I usually find roughly where an asteroid belt would be in orbit around a star. Yeah. Usually, like, kind of, a, you know, Jupiter range or beyond, asteroid belt or beyond. That's where I find the Durantium. But um, I think this looks good. Let's build her right there. Construct the star base, and we don't have any control modules yet, but once we get one, we will improve that to double up. Now, bear in mind, let's jump back in there. You can see the control relic will generate control for us, but it's not harvesting anything yet because we can't build the Xeno Archaeology Lab until we get a module. So we need interstellar cartography to finish as quick as possible. And then here's our other constructor, and this is going to go for the Durantium right there. Boom. And we will build her. There you go. Single Durantium. All right. We're getting most of what we need. Look, I see down here there's another antimatter, another thulium. Here's our interstellar cartography. As the vastness of the cosmos beckoned, the limitations of traditional navigation became painfully evident. Enter interstellar cartography, the science and art of cosmic topography that uncovers the intricate weavings of space time. This revolutionary technology involves mapping the gravitational tides, black hole trajectories, and dark matter corridors on a scale previously thought impossible. Harnessing the power of quantum computing and blah, 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 blah. These maps reveal, yeah, okay. It just means you're using uh, space-time curvature to act as eddies and currents. Simple, basic stuff. We don't need the whole description. But yeah, it makes our ships move faster. And we'll hit uh, choose new tech. So much good stuff. See, oftentimes I will ignore defensive and offensive abilities because unless you're going to be at war, you don't need it. But when you need it, when war comes, it's too late to get them. That is that is the truth. It's too late to build up your offense and defense once war is on top of you. I like this because it gives us some ship designs, gives us the weapon jammer, and it gives a plus five evasion to our, our gear out there. I also like orbital mining because I love to mine. This is the dwarf in me. I love it. Um, it's all good. It's all good. Do any of our worlds have orbital resources to harvest? Let's go to evasive tactics. We're going to choose evasive tactics. We'll hit done. And then as I mouse over here, is there anything in orbit that I can see? Kratos. Well, here, uh, let's see. Can I can click this way? I'm going to go to, so check, this is the quickest way. I click on Earth, I jump down here, it'll be right at the top. I click on Kratos 2, I click here, no specials, and finally Kratos 4. I click here, Orbital Snuggler Shelter. Now, bear in mind, the Orbital Snuggler Shelter takes hydroponics tech, 
not the orbital mining. We can keep going though. Remember, even though our colonies are not coral worlds, they also can take orbitals. So, Kratos 3 has no specialized orbital. Kratos 5, no specialized orbital in Mars, no specialized orbital. And what about uh, Artemis? Can't see inside of that. Okay. Well, I would say that that means that orbital mining is not particularly valuable to us, so we'll stick with the evasive tactics for now. Because again, we don't want to neglect our offensive and defensive capabilities. War will come. Um, but yeah, we're doing good. We've built a couple new star bases just in the last moment. Why? Oh, oh, it, it, and here we go. You'll notice that this control relic is not feeding the star base. Why? Because we hadn't built the Xeno Archaeology Lab. We will do that now. Build the star base, and there you go. Control per month, 0.1. Illyrium, 0.1. Now... If we build an ancient study center, it will give us additional relic harvesting, making the control go up. And if we do mining drones, it will make our Illyrium go up. It's kind of a bummer with a split star base like that because you do have to keep popping modules on to get both of those to go up. Now, we could quickly scroll through our other star bases. We always, what I do is I look over here under the resources for double or triple resources being harvested. And that's where I would upgrade. Those are the ones I'd upgrade first. So as I scroll through, yeah, here we go. Antimatter and Illyrium. Let's do it. Let's put our mining drone. We'll build it. And you can see there, we've just, for one module, we've gotten a lot more production. And we'll finish scrolling through. Yeah, that's it. So we're being strategic about harvesting strategic resources, stretching our Starbase modules as far as we can. And you can see now that harvest line is going to that star base. So that's perfect. But yeah, as I look around, I see the AMAT. I see more Illyrium. I see an Illyrium. And I see down here we've got an Illyrium and another antimatter pocketed away. So we have plenty of places to send, send out our constructors to. We rushed initially to get the best spots and to make sure that we got a smattering of strategic resources. We wanted to make sure that we had Durantium, Thulium, Illyrium, Antimatter, Promethean. Those are the five base ones. We've got a little bit of all of them coming in now from star bases or planets. That's good. That means we'll never be deprived of them completely and our empire can grow. After that initial rush, though, we have to be careful about what our shipyards are building. There's a lot of things we need to build. I will occasionally pop out an additional constructor. No longer in a rush, but I want to bit by bit pluck off these. I see one, two, three, four, five that I can see that are in our neck of the woods. But even up here, potentially this ascension crystal, there could be other resources back here to harvest. I don't need to get them all. And honestly, I can't beat the other Xenos to all of them, but we'll get as many as we can. At some point, it's really, really valuable when you're generating, say, eight entire Illyrium a month, which you can do. You can just go right to the bazaar, and every few months, you can sell off 20 of them and just get a bunch of credits. Over time, the price will drop down, but it will hit a bottom. And I think the minimum usually sits around five, six, eight credits, depending on the resource. But when you're selling them off 20 at a time, that can be well over 100 credits you know, every few months. So you take it because you can see how much trouble we're having generating credits right now. It ain't easy. Um, all right. I see over here, our worlds are working on different stuff. Kimberly's Refuge is coming along. Heritage Center, manufacturing, manufacturing. Kimberly's Refuge is an interesting one. Let's jump into Alula. Now, Kimberly's Refuge is going to generate food and growth. But food is important. As you notice up here, we are sitting at zero surplus food. That means there's a pressure that's going to slow the growth of our worlds. So um, I actually think we want that. It will give us more growth rate on this planet in particular. And honestly, what we'll need to do is build some population improvements so we can have more people here. So there's, there's a lot we need to do. Alula is struggling mightily right now. Um, if we're going to build a population center, it is oftentimes a good idea to build it around a core capital because, uh, well, here, let's just take a look here. 
if I build a housing district, it gives us a plus one to pop cap and it gives a plus one adjacency bonus to all other designs. And it's a population improvement itself. So, um, yeah, just give, give it a consideration. It would definitely help the Kimberly's Refuge. We could also build it over here in like kind of a, a, no, a do nothing place. Sure, we could put it over here potentially. Down in the peninsula, we could cram it out of the way. We could put them up here where there's not a lot of other useful stuff going on. I could see doing that as well. So it's a question. Um, I think for the time being, let's just drop one right there. At least we'll get the base effect and it'll give a plus one to these other areas that are maybe a little less useful for the time being. But I don't want to build this out too far here. Um, I'll tell you what we could do possibly at this point. Our approval rate's very moderate. Could we shift some of these people over to manufacturing? Do we have a particularly good diligence? Yeah. So this fellow here has a diligence of six. Let's switch him to a worker. And let's just see, we're sitting to 6.3. So we're going to click this fellow and we'll train him as a worker. It didn't get us anything. The reason it's not getting us anything is because it, we actually lost resource. We're going to, we're going to switch him back to a citizen. The reason it didn't get us anything is because their approval rating is sitting so low. Can we get anyone trained in there as an entertainer? No, we can't. <laughs> we got to get approval built up here, folks. Our Harmony Crystals are gonna, uh, giving us a 5%. Potentially, our governor's not loyal. Perhaps we could gift a, um, Uluchi Lei a Harmony Crystal. I know we've been saving our Harmony Crystals up because we actually, there's a building we want to make. But this is really slowing us down right now. Let's look at our governors. Hmm. She actually has a cooldown of 12 months till we can give her another crystal. She's super pissed at us. That's not great. Let's look at our worlds real quick. Let's jump into Lula Borealis. We are sitting at a 44% approval. Earth is sitting at a 72, which isn't bad, but it's still like a massive tax. Kratos 4 is a 47. And Kratos 2 is a 47. Okay, let's think about this. All of our worlds could benefit from higher levels of approval. Is there something we can do that would improve approval, improve approval across the entire, yeah. Um, the hollow, what's it called? We may not have it. It's like a hollow unit, something like that. I'm just gonna look through here. Uh, I'm looking for a galactic improvement. No, that doesn't, I'm looking for approval. No, no, although that has control. Well, I do want that for control. Mm. Oh shit, should we dump that in there eventually? Yeah, we should. It's going across, going across. Jeez. Loyalty? A governor's manor would generate loyalty. Which would make the governor happy. Which would give us, would help get rid of the governor's loyal detriment. Now, interestingly, our governor's loyal is a plus 2% here. But we, so we know 40 is a detriment, but 49 can get a plus 2%. So the 40 range is where you start to go from a negative to a positive. So clearly you want to get all of your governor's loyalty above 50 when possible. If we jump in here, we can see this low lo level T of a Luchi Lei here is generating a minus 3 at 44%. At 40 so roughly every 2% extra loyalty is getting us a plus one. Let's jump to our Earth where you can see we have 100% loyalty from DL Bradley. Governor's loyal plus 20%. So I don't know where the break even point is. We know that 40 is a minus three. We know that 49 yields a plus two. God, what is that working out to? <laughs> it's it's around, it's more than two, it's it's around two to three a, a loyalty points on your governor gains you a plus one approval for your people. 
So pushing up governor loyalty is a very good way to increase the approval of your planet bit by bit. That's why you want Harmony Crystals. Harmony Crystals are one of the only ways to really push up loyalty, plus the governor's mansion. So, yeah. What's going on here? Oh, manufacturing is at minus 100% because we're recovering from the plague. That sucks. This is really hurting us. What else could we do here? We can't buy a building outright because we don't have the credits right now. What else do we have? Beacon of Babylon. That's what we're saving the Harmony Crystals for. We're waiting to get three Harmony Crystals to get the Beacon of Babylon. Big influence buff. What else do we got? Uh, Razor's Lift or Razor's Lift. Rat, rat, no, razors, one Z, razors, lift. We can get that built pretty much at any time. We have Durantium coming in. Doesn't generate pollution. It's a nice thing about a space elevator. We'll look at it. No rush. Infinite garden. Oh, you do get approval from that. Interesting. We don't have enough of the worst arboretums yet. Actually, we have a really long way to go. We're generating one tenth. We have like 10 years so we can build this up. That would get approval though, right here. Track three, bar attack farmers as citizens cannot be built on our home world. Interesting. You can't build it on earth. That's fascinating. But it would generate some approval, a lot of tourism, culture points, food. Interesting. Um, now I'm just looking through, our worlds are all getting maxed out here pretty quickly. Kratos. Yeah, we've got the population center here at Alula. Gosh, we actually need the population center before we need more production. We back up here to Kratos 2. They need a population center. Um, yeah. That's for food. Maybe we could dump it right here. That plus one yeah, that's not a bad idea. And actually, the pop the, the population uh, housing district here will cause the supply depot to give us the bonus to approval and detriment to crime, as well as it'll drive up pop cap and gross income. So that's a good spot. And then it'll make these places a little more useful with that plus one as well. So we will drop that guy there for now. Anyone else? They've got a little bit of headroom left here. Although I'm not sure why we're not seeing all of our nine pops. It's a little little glitch out there. No big deal. And they got a little headroom left at Kratos 4 while they are slowly dealing with the plague. There's nothing else I can do there for them. Okay, well it done. Event. New pathogens born on Kratos 4. This just keeps coming up over and over. Didn't we already make the choice to do this? Ooh. It's too late to stop the virus from hurting the world, but we must keep it from spreading to other worlds. Ah. Let's do that. Let's take the minus 25% influence growth. Will that allow us to build there again? Is that the best option? Oh, geez, that might be the best option. Oh, no, they're still suffering from that. <laughs> well, that sucks. Where's the minus? There we go. New pathogens born, minus 100%. And then we just took the detriment to influence as well. Okay. I don't know what else to do about that. I'm not that that's one of the worst events I've ever seen happen. And it's not really obvious to me how you deal with it. I mean, I guess we should have stopped the plague to start with. But hopefully now the plague won't spread to other worlds. That would be my hope. Um are you plagued? Is anyone else plagued? This is the nearest planet. No one else is plagued. So in the future, don't mess with plague. It, it, it just seems to be completely not worth it. I'm assuming had we taken the minus 100% to income and manufacturing for 10 months to start with, it would have they wouldn't have become plagued at all. And then we would just have the 10 month countdown. But this is the third time this event has popped up for Kratos 4. I don't know what to do about that okay ship idle what do we got here this is a flagship the explorer and yeah we have a couple of anomalies to go detect so we'll work on those in another event tsa explorer m1 survey report lost cargo your ship's almost 
upon a cargo hold lost in the vastness of space. And essentially, we can get some antimatter out of it. Okay. So we have store the survey module. Ooh. Ooh, we want that. Yes, th this uh, allows us, if we put a survey module on a regular ship, it becomes a flagship. We want this. Or we could get two antimatter, or we could get some credits. No, we definitely want the flagship module. There you go. Survey anomalies. Okay, do we have, uh, let's jump into our fleet tab. We're looking for a ship that is not a consumable, like not a cargo ship, not an asteroid miner, but like a warship that's not already a flagship. So you can see here that the Constable meets that requirement. It's a tiny ship though. The Discovery is a flag. The Star Eagle is a little fighter. The Independence is a flag already. The Explorer is a flag. The Victory is a flag. And the Stargazer is a probe. Oh my. Okay. I'm a little cautious though. The Stargazer is not a bad ship. It's got 10 health. So it's not like a baby fighter like these guys. I'm afraid if we sent them out that they get destroyed right away. However, the Stargazer is a unique ship. Prototypes are unique. Once they are destroyed, they are gone forever. I'm going to try and put the survey module on the Stargazer. I'm a little concerned, though, that as it's a unique ship, it may not be able to take. I don't know if you can modify them. Let's try it. We'll find out together. It'll suck if we lose this. <laughs> It'll really suck if we lose the module, but we, we might as well try. It's the whole point of this playthrough. So where are we at? Stargazer is out here. So she is just exploring, but she's definitely not a flagship. Okay. Let's cross our fingers here, people. Surveying module. Boom. She is a flagship. Yes, that worked. Awesome. So now as she goes out about surveying cool stuff, we're going to have her research anomalies and all sorts of other stuff. But yeah, we'll just have her continue on her her surveying way. Or wait, survey? Explore. Oh, shit. Explore option disappeared when we upgraded her to a survey ship. So now she can no longer auto explore the galaxy. We have to manually move around looking for anomalies to survey. So if we hit survey, though, we'll attempt to find and go to anomalies. Sure. I don't see her pathing. We'll see what she does. I, I'm interested in what's at that star there, but we'll see what she does. Oh, it looks like it remapped and she's headed that way. Awesome. We just completed a colony ship, but I want to point out, I just saw a, a pirate, a white pirate fleet with like four ships pop up and then disappear up here. Most pirate fleets have a range, a sensor range of two or three. It's very short range oftentimes. That means that you can see them before they can see you and get away from them. But once they see you, they'll oftentimes close in. Now, as we mouse, I want to check our ship up here to make sure that pirate fleet doesn't come and attack her. So we're going to check that in just a moment. But otherwise, we want to load some citizens onto this colony ship. Now, can we see... Yeah, here we go. This is a little bit important. When you're putting a colonist onto a ship to start a new colony, they're going with all their foibles and their benefits. So in this case, um, Michael Learn here is a traditionalist and a criminal. Now, I know that criminals can spawn other criminals. So if we start a world with a criminal, it's possible we will. it'll get a lot more criminality. I, I'm guessing. But I have also wondered if you put like a traditionalist on that colony, will they tend to <clears throat> create more traditionalists? Could you direct your new colonies and core worlds that way? I don't know. But let's look over everyone else real quick. Traditionalist, that's awesome. Criminal, no. Criminal, why do we have so many criminals? Totalitarianism, a criminal. <laughs> what the, f what the heck? A nihilist. Nihilist, sorry, nihilist, not nihilist. Uh, synthetic life. So I never put a Yor onto a colony ship if I can help it. 
because they don't grow organically. So if you start a colony with a your, you'll have to build buildings. You'll have to have structures to grow their population. They will not grow by themselves. So you got to be careful. And you never want to mix Iconians and yours on the same planet. They will be unhappy. So if you ever have Iconians and yours, you're going to want to switch them apart. So all your your are on one colony, all your all your Iconians are on a different colony. So as I look through this list, though, unfortunately, come on, guy, where are you? Another criminal. What the f? We have so many criminals. I'm going to take uh, Danelle Luke here because she's not a criminal. We'll hit done. God, I hope Earth isn't getting a criminality problem. And we are going to send Danil over to Artemis. She'll drop in. We'll colonize. We've got a little option. Planet report for Artemis. Artemis is an inhospitable as we have seen, is as inhospitable as we've seen so far. It is cold, barren, and has limited atmosphere and gravity. It's planet nine. So our colony is deployed successfully, and our colonists quickly set to turning this minor planet into a new home. It is an example of what our courage and ingenuity are capable to or able to accomplish. One corporation is very interested in Artemis and offers a generous fee will allow them to exclusive licensing rights to the fledgling colony. That sounds scary. That sounds like an extremely bad idea. But we could celebrate this achievement across our civilization for plus 10 culture points. I like that. Culture points are hard to get, slow to get. Make this world a monument to our success and future expansion. Plus three cultural significance, which will feed into influence growth. And a plus 10 approval on the world only. But bear in mind, she's a colony, not a core world. So, eh, right? Or is that everywhere? Is that approval everywhere? Shit, I might like that. And allow the corporation to license the rights to the colony for 500 treasury. Wow. They're all good. It's a lot of money, but money is one of the most common things we can get. The 10% approval sounds awesome, and the 3% cultural significance sounds awesome. Does that feed into Earth? Earth was sitting at 72 approval. And then finally, just 10 culture points. Let's do this one. Let's take it. I click it. Now... When I look at Artemis, I see that, in fact, I believe she was a three research in one uh, on the approval or sorry, cultural input here. Uh, can we see it right here? Yeah. And that's not bad. Those cultural inputs are feeding into Earth. And now if I jump into Earth, so Earth did not benefit 10% approval from that. So I'm not really sure what that approval is for. I don't know that Artemis can ever be promoted to a core world. So that is highly questionable. But it did give us a lot more cultural input. 3.72. So that's a chunk. It's not bad. Um, I, I Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm disappointed with that approval option. Now, bear in mind, that may have been a somewhat generic... Uh, event to happen on a planet I, it seemed key to artemis but it might have been a name only yeah that's probably what it is so had artemis been a higher class planet that event could have popped up when you colonized it and then that 10 percent would have looped into the people that were there if you assigned a governor artemis is a class too poor will never be able to sign a governor it'll never be good enough so i only point that out to in the future for other players, be cautious of something like that approval. We're going, oh, it, well, it must give it to me. It's like, eh, it can only give it to you if you can get at it. I, I mean, I'm sure the plus 10 approval is there. It's just we'll never see it. But the cultural inputs are permanent. So I could have, I could have taken 10 culture points one time and then it's done. But by getting a plus 3 cultural input to Earth... That's forever. That's why I chose it ultimately. It, it will feed us for years to come. So hopefully it was well worth it. And then um, Artemis here. Oh my. Look at this. Why? 
Oh, that's fascinating. Let's think about this real quick, folks. Artemis can have four orbital improvements. For a little baby colony, that is potentially really valuable to us. Like, really valuable. But why? Is it because of cultural influence? Maybe Mars. No? Cultural inputs are two, but one orbital. Wow. Um, what's the difference? I don't know. I see the wealth input on both Mars and Artemis is two. I don't know. Oh, that's fascinating. Well, I'll tell you one thing I like about Artemis right now is that we could do an orbital market for one Durantium. Yeah. Let's do it. There we go. We just went from a plus one to a plus two. That's not a bad thing. And actually, we should probably do that as much as we can with the Durantium that we have. What about Mars? Can we do it there? Yeah. Build. It didn't quite get us a plus one. I'm guessing because we have a little bit of attrition on that. Yeah. Okay. Probably need another one somewhere. We have one more Durantium. Let's see. What else? What about Kratos 3 here? Here we go. Let's jump down. Orbital market. The fudge. These wealths should be driving up. Interesting. Interesting. It counts as an input. If you look, you can see all their... It's a wealth input to the planet, and then that gets sent over. So what's happening is we've added three wealth inputs between Earth and Kratos 4 over there. Kratos 2. But we are our tax rate sitting at thirty three percent, so it actually takes quite a, it takes three wealth inputs to our colonies for a thirty three percent tax rate to generate one extra income. We jump down here, we're sitting at a medium tax rate of thirty three percent. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. So the planetary incomes are growing, but we don't get thirty income; we get a third of it. Yeah, GDP here. Well, I, we've looked over this. So you got your overall GDP. That's all your incomes plus your trade routes multiplied by 0.33 for the tax rate. So that's why every time we, we make an orbital for wealth, we're not seeing that go up by one. It'll take about three of them for each one. Okay, simple enough. Shipyard idle. That's probably Earth. Yeah, here we go. So we could do those asteroid miners real quickly. Remember, we have two individual asteroid spots. There's not much, but the thing about an asteroid plot is it feeds in every month forever. So in the long run, it's really, really valuable. So let's do this. Let's build a little warship and then an asteroid miner and then a warship and then an asteroid miner. Yeah, let's do that. Cutter, asteroid miner, boom, boom, and grab another cutter, build ship. We'll stagger them. So we'll get some warships. I know they're very small, but they're better than nothing. Warships, asteroid miner, warship, asteroid miner. The other thing that those warships will help us with is defending the planet. You can see Earth here has the constable. Alula Borealis has no ship defending. Let's jump into Alula. Let's look at our unhappy people. We are unprotected right there. So all the people are suffering from that. Everyone feels that way. So we can drive up our approval by 5% just by getting a warship in orbit here. And what other main colonies need it? Kratos 2 needs it. Kratos 4 has a warship. Okay. That'll be well worth it then. Two new warships to defend Kratos 2 and Alula. It'll give us a little bit more approval, and it, it won't cost us anything, really, except the time to build the ships. Advancing turn. Where are we sitting here? Just a little over an hour. Yeah, we'll be wrapping up pretty shortly. So the nice thing is this time we did manage to get our constructors built where we wanted. We talked, uh, we delved in a bit about orbitals, which I don't think we really talked about before. Oh, Harmony Crystals. Ah, oh, I want those Harmony Crystals. Hold on a sec. All right. All right. We have a little Illyrium, no Durantium, a bit of Amat. Yeah, let's sell some Amat. Boom, boom, boom. 
Sell some Prometheum. Yeah, sell, 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 sell. And get some Harmony Crystals. One, two, three. What else could we sell? A little Thulium. Let's drop these to three here. I don't get. I don't want to get too crazy, but I want the money. Okay, check this out. We're gonna do a couple of things. Let's invite leaders. Yes. Let's jump in and just check over our new leaders real quickly. Anyone have any cool stuff? Frequently defies local customs. All right, that doesn't help us. She would boost research as a governor. That's not bad. Advocate. Helps with diplomatic stuff. Party loyalist. Has no friends and family outside the political party. That's scary. Wow. And over here, Stefan. Extra diligence. Encircled by prophecies at birth. That might be the way. I believe the way is the way philosophy or religion spreads to your people. I think each citizen that follows the way generates a plus one percent wealth on that planet. Not a bad thing to have floating around. I don't think it hurts you. And plus three to deception because she's manipulative. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so are any of these people worth getting? I like this 10 social, but she's extra expensive. I don't appreciate that at all. We have any ministry positions to fill? Not really. Eh, governorships, uh, they are what they are. I almost wonder if we should pull her out of, of Alula. She's boosting the manufacturing, but she's also boosting the, the pollution. She's just so damn unhappy. Let's see, who could we get that would be a decent leader that's happy? <laughs> She's too expensive. I said that already. She's got great stats, though. These are decent stats. Sarah here is, you know, 779, 4910. That's not bad, and she's very loyal. Is 6310, the 3 is a little too low. But she could potentially spread the way. Mm, question. I'm looking at cost as well, though. This nine for social is very nice for very high loyalty at a reasonable price. Let's get her. And who else? I'd say Sarah Say at the 63%. Pretty loyal with pretty good numbers. Oh, actually, I like I like Jen here because she actually has very two very high numbers. Let's grab Jen and she's very loyal. Let's jump over to our governorships. As I'm looking across this, oftentimes what I will do is look at the macro. I'll add up these numbers and I'll weight social a little bit. Now, for ministries, I like this 14% on diligence, but again, we already have a total badass on diligence. So that's not really that useful to us. We have a pretty good social here. I can see pulling one of these two out. Would either one of these folks be better in a governorship role? This would not be a bad governor, but she's extremely unhappy right now. This guy, Raymond here, just has a plus seven, and he's got crappy diligence, crappy intelligence. He's not good for really anything but. So let's take Carrie, pull her out. Let's drop in Marcy with that nine to colonization. That's a straight plus 2% approval across all of our planets. That's just going to help reduce that disapproval tax that we're suffering so heavily from. So it's a very small tweak, but I'll take it. Now, back to our governorships here. This uh, Aluchi is just killing us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna can Aluchi, pull her out of there. Makes her happier anyway. Okay, awesome. And then what? Let's take um, a very happy person with. Pretty decent stats. We'll drop them on a Lula Borealis. There you go. Now, unfortunately, because our social is sitting at a four, we're going to lose a little bit of approval. But she's loyal, which might help us out. Now, let's jump back into ministers. Let's pull Raymond out. Let's switch Marseille over to tourism. That is giving us credit income. 
And let's take Aluchi and drop her in here. That 10% approval now. That's a pretty good mix. And let's jump back into governors. Who is the weakest governor across here that we could slot in Kerry with? Now, we got to be cautious because Kerry is relatively unhappy. But we could go like for like. So Charles Azen over here, it actually has very good numbers for leadership. I think Ray is coming in as the weak link here. I think Ray is probably about comparable to Jenna because Jenna's social is lower and social is really important as a governor. But Ray is um, way worse at both research and diligence. Let's pull Ray out of there. And let's take Carrie and drop her. I hope Carrie's approval doesn't drop, though. It does. Carrie's extremely dissatisfied. That's fine. We will gift her a Harmony Crystal, popping her up to 48. So let's take a look around. And we've got those four Harmony Crystals left. I did want to hold on to the Harmony Crystals specifically to get that Beacon of Babylon built. But I want to jump back into Alula here and see if our messing around helped out. Yes, we got to 62% approval. Just for messing around with Jenna's loyalty. Jenna's much more loyal. So if I come into here, I can see that our loyal governor it gives a plus 14% now. That's massive. So by changing uh, the approval rating of our Minister of colonization push that up from a seven to a ten percent and then just having a much more loyal governor so what that's telling us and i guess i didn't realize that and maybe you didn't realize that is loyalty doesn't matter very much for minister positions what do we care how happy or unhappy our our minister is this number is straight related here it doesn't seem to be affected by loyalty at all but governorship it does matter. We want to get Carrie and Charles. We want these numbers well above 40. Into the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and higher. As high as we can get it for governor positions. So when we have Harmony Crystals, we're going to feed them to governors, not to ministers. Okay, I think that makes sense. But otherwise, yeah, we've got uh, pretty much the best people we can get slotted into these minister positions. And we'll keep hunting around for more and more loyal and proficient governors. We want the best people who are the most loyal in our government positions. So we really need to be hiring specifically for that when possible. This, this lady, Mary, here is actually a really good, Maria is a really good option because of that plus 30 research. Because she's got great stats and she's relatively loyal. Try and save up and see if we can purchase her out in the future. That being said, now that we have the three Harmony Crystals, we can, in fact, build the Beacon of Babylon. Just looking through some of these other options. Yeah, these are all pretty cool. What would be our best influence world, though? Earth, obviously, would do pretty well for influence. Anywhere else that is, that is notable for influence? The floating mountains here on Kratos 4. That looks good. It really does. Plus three to influence. Oh, gosh. And that would be adjacent to the capital, which would be a plus one. And then the Beacon of Babylon would generate an additional plus three influence adjacency bonus. So Kratos 4 could become our influence world. Although it has a lot of mineral inputs because it's a Promethean refinery world. So it's questionable. questionable. Not exactly sure what to do with that right now. So we dump it on Earth, or we jump it on... Oh, shit, I don't know. <laughs> Our Earth isn't really set up very well for us, though. For influence, unfortunately. The Heritage Center is tourism-based. It generates a plus three to influence. We've got plus three food. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think I do want that there. I think I want the... Listen, listen, we can develop production down here and up at the top, but we could keep this middle area approval, wealth, influence through here. Okay, let's do that. We will make a band of that. Now, obviously, we are waiting for the cooldown to pop off on 
well, we need the cure. We need the cure. And I don't know how long it's going to take to get over plague, but it'll sit for now. It'll sit for now. Another event. Kratos 4 Planet Report. Fuck, dude. Sorry, pardon my language. I'm about ready to end the session here. We're at a minute 15. That's plenty long, but, but how do we get rid of this? High pollution has led to mutations. Somewhat humorously, a local turtle was discovered with its tail and head reversed. Somewhat less humorously, the locals have begun calling it the Governor Turtle. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Has it changed stuff? Yes, it has. The options are changing. Immediately force local companies to comply with strict environmental standards. Minus 25% to manufacturing, minus 10 to pollution. We can take that because we're already sitting in minus 100% to manufacturing. Perfect. Have the governor shuttle brought to my private zoo. No char, no change. We must stop polluting, but there's more. We must also undo the damage we've done. Fuck. That would cost 600 to the treasury. Do we liquidate all the capital we have, all the strategic resources to make this happen? We might need to. We need a cure desperately. It greatly reduce pollution as well. Okay. Hold on. Decide later. I think we're going to need to do this here, folks. Let's sell everything. We can re-harvest. Oh, shit. Whoa, 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 what just happened? Why, why are, why is this showing our income at 2,429? Is that a glitch? What just happened? Hold on. Uh, this is the discovery. We're sending her out. Yeah, we're going to send her towards this star system here. Ooh, there's an artifact. Artifact first. The Victory has 18 HP. Remember I told you the pirate fleet went by? She's probably okay. If the fleet comes on her, we'll be screwed. But that being said, we want to get back to the event. Ah, damn it. Okay, Um, the Discovery Server report. She found a mysterious missile cache. So keep the advanced missile weapon prototype in our vault, allowing it to be installed on a ship later. When a ship goes up in experience level, we can put that on there, or we can sell it for credits. 500 credits? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. This has pushed us to 2,900 credits. Okay. Well, we need the 600 no matter what. I think that too may be glitching. I don't think we actually have 20. I think we have 900. So, here we go. We must stop polluting. We're going to spend 600 to treasury, take the minus 25% to manufacturing, the minus 20% to pollution. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what's happening with the income. So... It is what it is. However, did we fix the, the plague on Kratos 4? We're going to jump in. They're still plagued. It, it, this is interesting. Listen, you know what's good, though, is that, that pollution was sitting at 50% here because this is a Promethean refinery world that started at 50%. We've got it down to 30%. That's good. We're cleaning up pollution. Um... Excuse me, it'll help with growth when we can start growing again. I mean, she is very slowly growing. Um, but we still have zero production. Man, this world is dying from the pathogen. New pathogen born, manufacturing is at minus 100%. Mutated animals is minus 25%. That's the turtle thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, it's not approved, uh, messing with research income is getting hammered because of, because of what? New pathogen is born, food, pollution's hitting it hard, and influence, new pathogen is born is 25%. So this world's crippled. So this world is dying. I don't know what it's going to take to get the pollution fixed, uh, or to get the plague fixed at this point. I just don't know. Maybe in 10 months, it, it'll it'll all pop over and clear up. We really need to see what, what's, what it's going to take, but I don't know at this point. Um, my last 
question is, if I had enough credits, could I purchase out an improvement? Is there anything that would be cheap enough? No, like these are extremely high construction costs. Oh, the capital Mayframe is not that bad. Um, what else do we have? I'm just trying to see if there's anything that would improve pollution situations. That's more pollution. Industrial center. No. Well, I think we're just sunk for the time being. Kratos 4 is just totally sunk. There's only one other thing I can think of, and then I'll let you folks go, is if we had a doctor. <laughs> Every now and again, you will find a governor that is a doctor. None of these folks are, though. Oh, here we go. Well, that guy, environmentalist, overcame a crippling addiction. Eh, governors. No, no doctors. Crap. Oh, shit. We have a new flagship? Oh, man. Oh, here we go. Uh, let's grab uh, Ray here and drop him on the Perseverance. Perseverance gives a 10% approval uh, to any planet at which the ship is stationed. Um, ooh, that's tricky. We want our flagships out there researching anomalies, but we're almost out of anomalies. It may not be a bad idea to put the Perseverance in orbit around one of our unhappy planets. So if I just jump in here real quick, we can sort by approval. 62%, 71, Kratos 4 is at 42, Kratos 2 is at 50. So let's send her to Kratos 4. Here she is. And um, we will just drive her into Kratos 4. Oh, Kratos 4. Yeah, yeah, th this will work. Check this out. And then we'll take the ship that's at Kratos 4. We'll pop her out. We'll send her to Kratos 2. Kratos 2 is at 50% approval. Now, she... Oh, she's still at 50. Interesting. Well, you're no longer undefended, guys. What the heck? Maybe that'll adjust? I really thought that would have done more. But at any rate, um, let's drop the Perseverance into orbit at Kratos 4 and see if that helps with the approval there for the time being. Now, if and when we gain the ability to research new anomalies... We will try and kick the Perseverance out. We'll try and remember we have a flagship kind of sitting around. But uh, yeah, I think that's probably going to be it for now. This has been a very challenging playthrough. Approval has been a major issue. And this plague has turned into a pretty serious issue. Don't F around with plague, folk. Just in case that wasn't obvious to you. But um, I feel like it's interesting. It's, it, it is actually feeling different than some of my other playthroughs. For, for a basic setup... And I, I think we're sitting on a pretty easy mode. Decent challenge so far. Um, if you watched, I appreciate it. No show next week. I'm going to be in Germany. So um, I'm going to Germany for almost two weeks. So this is getting uploaded this first weekend. Nothing next weekend. But probably by the end of May, I'll be back. And we'll get back to it here with Gal Civ 4. Appreciate your time. Take care.